And saints, uh, good morning. I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I look at the time and I know that we have a problem with time. And as pastor was giving his first message and sister um, Susan was giving a testimony, I said to myself, only Jason would know <laughs> what I'm feeling. Jason understands that. As you wait to come up and the time is going. So I would do need uh, a little time this morning. Saints, I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to convey greetings from my wife, who is not here. She had to um, attend a, one of our very good friends in New York. His wife is having a 50th birthday party, birthday celebration. This guy has been very good to us, to my son, to us. And he invited both of us, but you know, it's too much for both of us to go. So she went, and she's in New York now. And that is why she is not here. One of the things she tells me is that you make too much jokes. Well, I don't know. I, I guess that's the way I am. I try not to make jokes. Not as I, you know, and um, I love you very much. You're very encouraging people. But the thing with me, even if I don't make jokes, people still laugh at me. <laughs> I remember I was... I ate a piece of candy and I wrapped up the candy paper and I stood over the garbage pail and you know I played I'm a basketball player and I and it fell behind the pail. So I bent over behind the pail, picking up the piece of paper. When I turned around, there was Brother Cecil, Sister Cardinal's husband. And Cecil is normally very quiet, very cool. And he saw me pick up the paper from behind the pail. And he says, Brother Jerry, I say, yeah. He said, you try to throw that paper in that pail. I say, yeah. You miss. <laughs> and he turned around and he was laughing at me. He entered the church and he was laughing because I saw his ears jumping. He's laughing. <laughs> and the other day, I went to make some groceries and um, my dear sister Maria, who has one of the beauty most beautiful smile, um, sister, brother, um, brother Andrew's wife, she was in the store, she paid for her groceries, and on the same counter I put my groceries. She looked at my groceries and she laughed. What it is is that I had a nice tray of spinach, green spinach, and three bottles of Coca-Cola. <laughs> and she like, you know, what is this? <laughs> she laughed. <laughs> yeah, you know. And I'm trying to tell her, the spinach is for me, but the Coca-Cola is for my wife. <laughs> and she still laughs at me. And when I went outside now, to, you know, my, my wife is sitting in the car. It so happened that she went out before me. Sister Maria went out before me. She happened to park right next to my car. So I showed her my wife sitting there. She turned her glass on and she still laughed at me. But it's okay. She had a beautiful smile. You could laugh at me anytime. I love you and I love when you laugh. And sometimes I... Um, I try to make a point, it's not necessarily to give a joke, but sometimes, you know, depending on what it is. So, anyhow, um, Pastor Mickey gave us a joke last Wednesday night, you know. He did. And, by the way, we're having a very good Bible study. Last Wednesday, he taught us about loving, the new type of love. But the Wednesday before, he told us about uh, two, two couples, old, older people. The wife complained that she, the husband don't peck her anymore. He got her from the bed. She said, where are you going? She said, I'm going to get my teeth. Pastor Biggie gave us that joke. So I'm not the only one. <laughs> God bless you. All right. Saints. I hope you're feeling all right. <laughs> Today I want um, to, I want us to consider the life of Jesus. It was real with problems. 
but he overcame with his authority and his power. I want you to know we are like him. He drew from God the Father, and we can, drew, we can draw from him. In the end of our life, our lives, we must be able to say, no one took it away from us. Whatever it is, life, health, money, no one takes it away from us. Like he said, no one took it away from him. He gave it up. We have that power and that authority. And for that message, I want to use a very familiar passage this morning. And my topic would be, find your word of rebuke and use the name of Jesus. And for the theme, get the job done. Get the job done. So we're going to read this morning a very familiar passage. In Mark chapter 4, verses 37 to 39. Mark chapter 4, 37 to 39. We know the story that Jesus went into a ship or a boat with his disciples to cross over a lake or a sea, whatever you want to call it, a body of water. The Bible says, and there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind. And said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. To rebuke is to say to the condition the opposite of what it is doing. And tell it what you want it to do. Find your word of rebuke. The wind and the rain, it didn't matter the wind and the storm. It didn't matter that Jesus, the Son of God, was on that boat. Now, some people say he was God and he knew there was going to be a storm. But the Bible didn't say so and I'm not going to say so. It shows us the realities of life. That as great as you are, as big as big, whatever you are, there is a storm that could come into your boat at a particular time. Storms come. Oh God, I have had storms in my life. But what happens when the storm comes and your faith is asleep? The word of God is asleep in you. All your confessions are asleep in you. What you do is you wake them up. You wake them up and you say to the storms. You just don't think. You say it. You rebuke it. Find your word of rebuke. What is your word of rebuke to every situation? I always think about situations where a woman will put out a man, or a man will put out a woman, or they will divorce. And there are certain things they will say to each other where you wouldn't come back. You know, they used to have a call or so a long time ago. Don't come back again, and they use the N-word. Don't come back again. It was a call so in the old days. When you tell a person don't come back, and you really stand firm, they're not going to come back. People are going to obey you if you stand firm. And the wind and the rain and the conditions are going to obey you. The demons are going to obey you if you stand firm and you use the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So you have to find a word of rebuke. The Bible says in Proverbs 18, 21, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it, love it, shall eat the fruit thereof. Death 
and life are in the power of the tongue. Now, sometimes we relate that scripture only to us, meaning what we say, right, about ourselves. But you know what it is? That scripture also relates to the enemy. Death to the enemy is in the power of your tongue. Your tongue, the same tongue that could bring death to you, could bring death to the enemy, could bring death to the situation, could change the situation in the name of Jesus Christ. That is where your power is. I give you, uh, Brother George, I, I give you a, a, a screenshot about the names of Jesus. I don't know if you have it there. Okay. Um, in the original language, Jesus was called um, Yeshua. Yeshua. When, when, when God spoke to Mary, he, he had to have spoken Aramaic. So Yeshua is the name of Jesus. But in Greek, they call him Jesus. And in, yeah, in Latin, it, it became Jesus. Yeshua became Jesus. And from Jesus, we have Jesus. So whether you call him Yeshua, Jesus, or Jesus, you must know who he is. That's the important thing. Because the devil knows the devil knows. And when you call in the name of Yeshua, the name of Jesus, and you really believe, the devil has got to obey. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you this. All of nature is movable, shakable. Every demon would obey the word of God. Every demon would obey your command. You know the only entity that God cannot deal with, cannot get them to obey is man. Is man. God talked to the Red Sea and it obeyed. He talked to the rock and it brought forth water. He talked to the wilderness. And Joshua talked to the heavens, to the sun and the moon. In those days, he didn't know about the rotation of the earth. He only knew that when the sun was out, the moon was somewhere else. And he said, sun, stay where you are. And moon, stay where you are. And they obeyed him. Everything, everything obeys the word of God and the man of God. Speaking the word of God, saints of God, if you would speak from God, speak the word of God, speak in the name of Jesus in faith. Everything is movable. But man, everything, everything, you know, I always feel sorry for God. Not seriously. To see how he cried out to Israel. How many times has he begged them? Come back. Come back to me. Serve me. Begging them. You know, in Ezekiel, you don't have the scripture. He says, um, he said unto them, as I live, said the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked will turn from his way and live. Then he says to them, turn, turn you from your evil ways. He's begging. For why will you die, O house of Israel? Why? And Jesus Christ, in trying to get the people who he was talking to, to obey him, he said, believe that I am he. Believe he's begging Believe that I am here, a man who, who raised the dead and turned water into wine. And he is begging his people, believe that I am here. He said, if you don't want to believe that, believe for the very work's sake, the work that I do. I'm, come on, believe now, man. Why am I saying this? It's a warning to us. It's a warning to us. How much times have we turned from God's pleading. We have the word. He is begging, believe that I am he. He raised a dead man. 
Well, at least you will say, oh, he's done it. Now they're going to believe. Rather than the believing, they want to kill the man that he raised. You know that story? They went out to kill Lazarus. Rather than believing in Jesus. Saints of God, don't do like the Israelites have done. Believe the word of God and make changes. So deal with your storms. Deal with your storms. Don't complain. Uh, don't, 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 don't get dazzled. Just deal with your storms. They're going to come. But you have the authority and the power over them. Now, hear what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. A mistake we make is believing that God gives us storms. That God gives us sickness. That God is the one who is doing the things to us. That's a mistake we are making. And we make that mistake by misinterpreting or translating or misinterpreting 1 Corinthians 10, 13. The Bible says, they have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Now hear this. He didn't say there is no temptation that I'm going to put on you. He said, no temptation is taking you. Jesus was on the ship. The storm was taking him. Your sickness is taking you, either genetically or what you eat, or what you fail to do. There is a reason why, and I could give you stories of my own life where I was doing something that caused me to, to hurt. And we, we read about Epaphroditus in the New Testament. The Bible says that he was sick unto death. And the reason why he was sick unto death is because he overworked himself. Jesus said there is no temptation that takes you. That it, it is common. Common to men. Even to the unsaved, I spoke to an unsaved young woman one time and I was sorry for her. You think she is happy and she is partying and things, but she's going through hell. Nothing is happening to you that is not common to man. He said, But God is faithful. This is what this is the difference now between the unsaved and us. The unsaved have no God that they can turn to. They have to go through until they die if they do not repent. But for us, God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape that you might be able to bear it. So the temptations are going to come. The storms are going to come. But there comes a time when Father says, whoa, that's enough. No more. No more. And then he gives you a word. He sets you up. And he brings a victory. And he turns the thing around for your good. For all, everything works together, together for our good. Everything. And those of us who are saved, we are okay. And if you are not saved today, get saved because... When you are saved, Father looks out for you. He looks down to you. He hears your cry. He sees and he knows. And don't be fooled by this, by Satan and devils and telling you that your father is doing this to you. Tell me, I always say to people, some of, some of the things that we say God does to us, would you do that to your children or your grandchildren? Let's be reasonable. No, you wouldn't. Conditions are in the world. Conditions are in the world. And they happen. When they happen, you stand up in the name of Jesus Christ. And you get your word of rebuke. Everyone has a word of rebuke. I said so one time, a long time ago, I was, had this little girlfriend and I was backslidden. And well, long story short, she left me and I wanted to come back to her. And I was passing one night and I saw her sitting, sitting in the back of a church and I said, that's my chance, you know. And I went in the church and sat close to her. She chased me. One word. She rebuked me. I obeyed. I ain't stupid. The devil ain't stupid. The demons ain't stupid. They know when you are serious. They know. And I'm going to tell you right now, 
The things that assail you. Depression. Anxiety. Sicknesses. Poverty. Lack. Scarcity. They can all be spoken to in the name of Jesus Christ. I do it every day. You heard how much I suffered with depression. You heard my song, Hide Me Jesus. I suffered like anyone could have suffered with depression. When you reach a situation where night, in the nighttime you want the day to come, and in the daytime you want the night to come. No night, no day, you have rest or peace. You know how low that is. And now, even now, Satan still tries to come back to me with that. But I have a word of rebuke. Let him know that my Savior, Jesus Christ, has taken everything. He has given me the spirit of joy. I am a child of God. I am in Christ, encrypted with Christ, in God. I talk to it. I rebuke it. And it comes back, you know. It comes back. Don't be afraid when it comes back. Whatever it is, rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Find words that fit your situation. I don't know what you are experiencing. I don't know. But find words that fit your situation. And rebuke it. Now, sometimes, sometimes, there are things that need to happen or change. Before you can get your victory. Yes. My, I keep talking about my wife. Because she always tells me, Jerry, you talk about yourself too much. <laughs> but what can I say? I'm talking experience. I've had the experience since. And I have to make changes in order to get deliverance sometime. We had a piece of property one time. And the property maybe was worth, in those days, about $250,000. And one day a pastor came to me. And I think he came with an entourage. And. He said, we walked around this property, he says. We needed to build a church. And the Lord tell us we walked around it. Of course, I wanted to sell the property too. Property worth about $250,000. I said, okay, well, how much money do you have? He said, well, you could get about $30,000. So they have $30,000, and they walked around the property in the name of Jesus and believed they could get the property from me. Well, I have to walk the other way now. Because I ain't giving them my property. <laughs> and both of us use it in the name of Jesus. So when you do wrong, it ain't going to happen. You got to find the right part, the right way, the right words. You cannot do wrong and get right. Sometimes we have to repent. Sometimes we have to change. You got to find out what it is, Lord. What it is. Yeah, how much my property with thirty thousand dollars? That my I I, I can't pay the tax on the property. <laughs> Do what is right and then talk to God. So when you rebuke, oh, <laughs> this this woman, this preacher, African American preacher, one time she came to our church in New York, and she's a very powerful preacher. And she said to us, she went to Trinidad, Tobago, and she was preaching. And you know these preachers that say, when they feel a pain, they say, somebody has a pain. Right? They're feeling the pain. So she felt this pain on her leg. She said, somebody is having a, a pain. And it's getting worse. And it's getting worse. Next thing, they had to take her to the hospital. A scorpion was biting her. No, seriously, she, she, she told us that. I'm saying all you said, that you have to be careful. The word of God is true. But you have to know. And you have to seek the Lord. So when your rebuke and thing is not, is not working out for you, go before God and humble yourself. And say, Lord, what is it? What am I doing wrong? Show me. The Lord will reveal to you the pathway out. Because the Bible says, when they had brought this sick boy to the disciples to pray for him, in the book of Mark, you don't have that. And they couldn't cast the demon out of the boy. Jesus came to them, and he cast the demon out. And they asked him, why couldn't we do it, Jesus? 
And Jesus said, this kind come out, doesn't come out by anything, but by prayer. Now, the King James has prayer and fasting. Let me tell, let me tell you some things that I have discovered. When I'm reading, I give up everything that I know. And I seek the Lord, the Holy Ghost. And whenever a word disturbs me, confuses me, I seek God until I get the answer. Now it says here in the King James, it only comes by prayer and fasting. But that bothered me. Because I said, what happened if I, you get sick right there? Do I have to go home and fast and come back? How much fast? How long is fast? Something is wrong, Lord. Something is wrong. And eventually, when I read other versions, like the NASB and the NIV, and even the King James Version, the addition, no, the, the King James, yeah, the, that addition and fasting is not in some of the original texts. But some of the translators in the Bible, they have added words to help us, thinking they are making it easy for us. There are things that King James will add, and you see it in italics. You know that. It is not in the original. So whenever you're reading the word and you're not getting through and something is just, it's just not right. You seek the Lord. So when I got this scripture and I realized that and fasting is not in the original, I said, that is it. So what Jesus was saying, some things you are able to deal with, but there are some things you cannot deal with. It only happens through prayer. You have to go to the Father and you have to pray. And the Bible says in James 5, 16, hear this. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. So sometimes saints, and brother John, I'm thinking about the men, Sometimes we need to come together as men. Men have a lot of problems these days. A lot of problems. We need to come together and confess our faults. I'm not talking necessarily about sin. Talk about what is happening. What is ailing you? What is paining you? What your problems are? Come, come, come. Let us come and cry on each other's shoulders. And pray for each other. And when we pray in faith, the Bible says that God will deliver us. Some things you cannot cast out. You have to pray. You have to pray. And so, Brother John, I will host a meeting with you with the men. Anytime you're ready, let us come together and deal with man issues, men issues. And pray. And pray. And pray. Because not everything, sometimes we don't have the strength. One man doesn't have the strength. I know what I'm talking about. So let us get together. And women, you too, get together and, and confess. Talk to each other. What is happening with you? And pray. Now we know that Jesus was on a mission when he went on that boat. He was on a mission. And the enemy... Well, I won't say the enemy because one thing I'm going to tell you is this. The Bible does not say that Satan has power over nature. It doesn't say it. I don't believe Satan has power over nature. If he had, it would be mess, chaos. He does not have power over nature. I don't care who says what. So, uh, sorry for speaking this rough. When I say I don't care, I mean... It really doesn't matter as long as, long, as long as the Bible doesn't say it. You, the saints of God, have more power over nature than Satan. In the name of Jesus, with the power of the Holy Ghost, the dunamis. Satan does not have power over nature. Nature will do its thing. Storms would come. So after this storm now, reading from Mark 5, 1 to 5. After the storm, hear what the Bible says. And they came over on the other side, as Jesus and his disciples, into the country of the Gadarenes, that's how I pronounce it, 
And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with feathers and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the feathers broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him, and always night and day he was in the mountains, and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. And every time I read that, I feel is a sadness that comes over me. Here was this man, no help, nowhere, from nobody. He was crying. You know why he was crying? He couldn't help himself. I must have told you about my brother that I had. He passed away now. He used to beat himself up. Bust his jaw, bust his eyes, and crying. I hear him crying sometimes. He couldn't stop. Sometimes we tie him with ropes. I was too young to understand to cast the demon out. Oh God, but he died afterwards. And sometimes people are crying. You don't know. They cannot stop. They're addicted. They're hurting. And this man was crying, cutting himself. But Jesus was on a mission. He had a job to do. He approached this poor man. Oh, how I wish we could free some poor souls. I wish, even today, that this message, I don't know where you are. I don't know what you are crying about. I wish that this message somehow will free some poor souls. And so the devils knew their time had come, you know. Jesus approached this man. And we continue reading Mark 5, 11 to 13. Now there was there, nigh unto the mountains, a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And forthwith, Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. There were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. 2,000 pigs could not bear for five minutes what this poor man was putting up with day and night and day and night. 2,000 of them, they couldn't take it. They went down and they were choked in the sea, the Bible says. God alone knows what some of you are going through. It's a pity I, have, I don't have more time. I want, I want to bring you into the reality of who Jesus is, but maybe that's for another time. Sometimes I wish we could gather maybe on a Sunday night. I said, talk to me if you want to call me. If you want to gather together. Let's talk about Jesus, man, because some way, somehow, I think we forget who Jesus is, man. Jesus is real. He is real. And if he is coming back, if we believe that he's coming back, well, we must believe that he is here with us now. I listened to the young boy sing, and he has a tremendous voice, but he was, he's talking about the future, when it should happen. Well, right now, right now, we need for things to happen. And Jesus Christ would never walk in here and leave you the way he met you if you're having a problem. But you have to go to him. He went to his own people in, in Mark 7. And the Bible says he could not do many miracles there. You know that story? He could not. Not he didn't want to. He could not. And again, when I read, I pray, and the Lord will speak to me and explain to me what the word is saying. You know what it means? He could not. He could not. You know why? The way how they treated him, what they thought about him, they did not accept him. He was not able. To, he just could not. 
And the Lord gave me an example. In Grenada years ago, we had a little airport named Pearls Airport. And the big planes couldn't land on Pearls Airport. They had to go to Trinidad or Barbados. And therefore, if you were sending a shipment of whatever it is with one of these big jumbo planes, and it flew over Grenada, and it looked at that airport, it cannot land. Couldn't land. Because your airport was not ready. You want him to land? Build an airport. Build an airport if you want him to land. That's why he could not do many miracles. You want him to do miracles in your life. Now believe in him. Call on his name. Rebuke the devil. Don't stay and cry and cry. Don't complain. Don't blame him either. Don't blame him. And know this. that Everything is possible with him who believes. I believe in the name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ. I believe that I have authority over all the works of the enemy. I believe that I have the dunamis power. I believe that life and death, death and life is in the power of my tongue. And I'm going to use it. Do the same, saints. Today, make a difference. Today, make a difference. Let us rise. Let us rise. Let us rise. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.